Hello, this is Aurindam Ghosh. As I have already introduced myself, an assistant professor in the Department of English, Krishna Chandra College, Hitampur Bhum. This is my fourth video lecture on Christina Rossetti's Goblin Market. So, uh, we uh, engaged ourselves into uh, ourselves into a textual reading of the entire poem of the Goblin Market. Uh, in the previous section, we have uh, discussed about how uh, Laura actually uh, clipped her golden hair and uh, she actually offers this golden hair as an adequate payment uh, uh, for eating the goblin fruit. From this section uh, onwards, we uh, will visualize that Laura immediately begins to suck the fruit that is presented to her and later on we will see the fate of Laura after eating this fruit. So, let us begin. Then suck their fruit, globes fair or red, sweeter than honey from the rock, stronger than man rejoicing wine, clearer than water flowed that juice she never tasted, said before. So, the poet tells us very categorically and clearly that this kind of juice have, uh, has never been tested by Laura before. And uh, she shocked the, 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 this fruit uh, and it almost uh, appears sweeter than the honey from the rock. So the fruit's flavor is unlike anything she has ever tested. So no matter how much she eats, she does not grow tired of its flavor. So the imagery of seduction and sexual enchantment is always there. How should it cloy with length of use? She sucked and sucked and sucked the more fruits which that unknown orchard bore. The, the fruit are contained in an orchard and the unknown orchard. The sheer mysticism and enigmaticness of the orchard and the fruit has always been highlighted. Je dharoner fall eneche goblinra. Shei foller dharon start classification konotai Laura ba Lizzy korte parche na karon shei fall tader chena noy pache na she sat until her lips were sore totokkhon obdi khelo totokkhon obdi tar thot ta phule gelo then flung the empty rings away but gathered up one carnal carnal stone and knew not was it night or day as she turned home alone after finishing the food and the fruit she didn't knew whether it was night or day and she turned home alone. So unaware of her surroundings and whether it is night or day, Laura makes her way to the home alone and when she arrives, Lizzie is waiting for her at the garden gate. Lizzie met her at the gate full of wise upbraidings. So from these very words, uh, we can actually uh, uh, know and gauge about some of the characters of Lizzie. That Lizzie always tries to uh, uh, instruct Laura and always tries to warn Laura about the impending dangers of eating that fruit. But Laura is uh, completely unconscious about that. So uh, Lizzie actually scolds her with wise upbraidings. The phrases like honey from the rock and man rejoicing wine actually alludes to biblical phrase, alludes to the uh, God's provision of good things for his faithful followers. So, uh, the goblin fruit seems sweeter than the honey and stronger than that of the wine, suggests that its goodness is only an illusion and that in accepting and preferring it, Laura is being laid away from the God. Lizzie's scolding is useless in this context because the fruit has already poisoned Laura's mind and destroyed her peace of the mind. Moving into the next section of the poem, Lizzie said with instructive voice, the dear you should not stay so late. Twilight is not good for the maidens. The twilight, the transitional phase between the ni night and the day, between the evening and the night is not good for the maidens. It is not good for the spinsters. At a Malauto Victorian period, the twilight, Godhuli, is not at all a good time period. Though I don't know why, 
but it is not a good time period for the women and they should not loiter in the glen in the horns of the goblin men so they should avoid uh, these goblin men they shouldn't loiter in the narrow valley and avoid these goblin men do not remember jenny do you not remember jenny here is an example of another woman who is perhaps another example of the fallen victorian woman jenny whose name uh, has been cited uh, in the poem as a, as a kind of a warning that laura should not embrace the destiny of jenny do you not remember jenny tumi ta jenny kotha mone nei how she met them in the moonlight took their gifts both choice and many ate their fruits and owed their flowers tomar ki mone nei kemon bhabe jenny have uh, taken their gifts and uh, choose their fruits and owed their own owed their flowers pore chilo tader deva phul gulo mathar modhe plucked from bowers but summer ripens at all hours so this is clearly a reference to the middle eastern countries where or or for example countries like india and china asian countries where the summer ripens at all hours so this game of self and the other in that europe is the self jekhane weather essentially cold jekhane weather at all time remains harsh ar এখানে একটা ওরিয়েন্টিক্যাল এক্সটিকার কথা বলা হচ্ছে এক্সটিক অ্যাটমসফিয়ার যেখানে সামার অলওয়েজ রাইপেন্স এট অল আওয়ার্স সব সময়ই সামার ফলগুলোকে রাইপেন করে সেরকম একটা দেশ থেকে আনা হয়তো এই ফলগুলো সেখানকারই অধিবাসী সেখানকারই নেটিভ স্পিকার হয়তো এই গবলিনরা উই ডোন্ট নো রিয়েল বাট লিজি কনস্ট্যান্টলি রিমাইন্ডস লরা অ্যাবাউট দ্য ফেট অফ দ্য জেনি how she have a uh, fall prey fallen prey in the hands of the goblin men but ever in the moonlight she pined and pined away she pined for the fruit sought them by night and day ek bar khawar pore bar bar khuje chhe din ratri so found them no more but dwindled and grew gray and she dies prematurely then fell with the first snow while to this day no grass will grow where she lies though so snow the winter is always the imagery of the death when the snow the first snow fell the jenny died and even to this day no grass actually have grown in the uh, where jenny lies uh, 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 no grass have grown in jenny's grave and nor will the daisies that lizzy planted there a year ago so no uh, while to this day no grass will grow where she lies i planted daisies where, uh, there a year ago that never blow she can't kintu she full top potani daisy you should not loiter so tomar shei jonno ekane ghure berano uchit noy so it refers to the various didactic literatures of the victorian period uh, it also reminds us about the didactic literature of the victorian period ekane uh, lorer bhobishyat ki hote pare সে ব্যাপারে লিজি কিন্তু আমাদের কনস্ট্যান্টলি ওয়াইজ আপব্রেডিংস এর কথা বলছে এবং বলছে যে জেনি এদের যেরকম অবস্থা হয়েছিল দ্যাট শি ডায়েড অ্যান্ড গ্রিউ গ্রে ডায়েড প্রিম্যাচিওরলি এজিং প্রিম্যাচিওরলি ফর আ উইমেন ওয়াজ আ ব্যাড ওমেন ইন দ্য ভিক্টোরিয়ান পিরিয়ড ওয়াজ ব্যাড সাইন জাস্ট লাইক নাও এখন যেরকম অ্যান্টি এজিং ক্রিম বিভিন্ন বেরিয়েছে ভিক্টোরিয়ান পিরিয়ডে তো সেরকম ছিল না ইন দ্য ইয়ার এইটিন সো নিজের ইউথফুলনেসকে ধরে রাখতে হবে কারণ একটা ওমেনের একটা নারীর একমাত্র সিরিউজ করার বা পুরুষের কাছাকাছি যাওয়ার উপায় হচ্ছে তার তার সৌন্দর্য তার বিউটি এবং এখানে কেবলমাত্র এবং কেবলমাত্র ফিজিক্যাল বিউটি এফিমেরাল বিউটির কথা বলা হয়েছে নট দ্য বিউটি অফ দ্য মাইন্ড সো ফলে এটা খুবই এক্ষেত্রে ইম্পর্টেন্ট যে ক্রিস্টিন রসেটিও ক্ষেত্রে ফিজিক্যাল বিউটি অফ দ্য উইমেন অ্যান্ড ফিজিক্যাল বিউটিটাকে ধরে রাখার কথা হুইচ ইজ এসেন্সিয়ালি আ পেট্রিয়াল কনসেপ্ট তার কথা এখানে বলার চেষ্টা করেছেন ফলে পুরুষতন্ত্রের যে ট্র্যাপগুলো সেই ট্র্যাপগুলোতে আমরা বলতে পারি ক্রিস্টিন রসেটিও হ্যাভ ফলেন প্রে ইন দ্য হ্যান্ডস অফ দ্য পেট্রিয়াট অ্যান্ড লিজ ইজ কশনারি টেল অ্যাবাউট জেনি হু 
who ate their fruit was abandoned because, because it reflects a common trajectory for the fallen women in the Victorian literature and art, one in which they experience a sexual fall. So Jenny is a stereotypical and archetypal example of the fallen women as portrayed and represented in Victorian literature and Victorian art. The barrenness in the Jenny's grave on which no vegetation will grow symbolizes the way that the goblins have robbed her of the opportunities of marriage and motherhood. Two very important institutions and two very important words in the Victorian period. Because the destiny of a woman according to the Victorian morality is surrendering to the institution of marriage and then embracing motherhood. Marriage number institution is surrender kora ebang parabortikale ma hawa. Etai ak ebang ak matro goal and objective of a woman. Etai shimi dakhana hoye che. So barrenness in the grave of Jenny actually suggestive of the barrenness, the, the bodily barrenness of Jenny. So uh, it symbolizes that goblins have completely robbed off the way, the, the, the opportunities of marriage and motherhood, the two very important ideal uh, institutions uh, for women according to the Victorian standards. So, Eibhave, Victorian patriarchal politics, patriarchal uh, political fervor uh, at a subliminal way, subterranean way, Shamne na eleo, Ei Kobitar, narrative voice and mudde, patriarchal voice, ta barbar luki eroche. Even a women poet, a woman poet like Christina Rossetti have surrendered uh, to the patriarchal politics. Patriarchal politics of uh, valorizing motherhood and marriage. Shetar Shetar Victorian period Bhavar scope So Amra 2020 text we will not only detect goblin market as a proto-feminist text, but also we will uh, pluck out, we will point out to the patriarchal politics uh, uh, hidden inside the text. Luki erosha text and modhik shamosto purus tantrik rajnitir galpo shegulo amra bear kora cheshta kora. So ne hash said Laura. Nay hash my sister, I ate and ate my fill. Yet my mouth water still. Tomorrow night I will buy more and kiss her. Have done with sorrow, I will bring you plums more. So, uh, Laura have already fallen prey uh, to the seductions of the goblin. Laura will nay hash my sister. Please remain silent, my sister. Chukkoro. I ate and ate my feel, I have enjoyed eating the food, yet my mouth water still. I am still attracted to the water. Tomorrow night I will buy more, I will buy more food and kissed her and said that I have done with the sorrow. That uh, as if this fruit uh, is the only equivalent of erasing sorrow. I will bring you plums tomorrow. Fresh on their mother twigs, fresh palm, from uh, freshly plucked from their mother twigs. Agdom dal teke chera pal. Cherries worth getting. You cannot think what figs my teeth have made in. You will never be able to imagine what figs I have my teeth have made. Amar dant gulo ki fall kheje in habdi bata. What melons icy cold piled on a dish of gold too huge for me to hold. It's too huge for me to hold. Such huge fruits are there. What peaches with a velvet nap? Pellucid grapes without one seed. Amon grape jarmon dekono bij ne. Order as indeed must be the mead. Whereon they grow and pure the wave, the drink. It's I guess the purity of the, uh, uh, of the fruits and purity of the trees in which these uh, uh, fruits have grown. With lilies at the brink and sugar sweet than sap. So Laura, however, dismisses her sister's concerns, telling her to hush. And Laura explains that although she ate her feel of goblin fruit, her mouth still waters for it. And so she has resolved to meet the goblins on the following night in order to purchase more. 
and Laura tries to reassure her sister of the fruit's goodness. Kissing Lizzie, she describes with rapture the delicious and varied fruit she has sampled. Plums, cherries, etc. So, uh, what critical comment we can say is that that Laura does not yet realize the danger that she is in, but her admission that she still hungers for the fruit, despite eating a great deal of it, alerts the reader about the impending danger. The paragraphical that the bipo das the chole che, she tamra buzdi parchi. A Laura description of the fruit gulo theke, and the very pointed sexual allusions and the sensuous language through which Laura uses to describe the fruit uh, to the Lizzie is very significant in this context. As if adopting the goblin's way of speaking, Laura tries to tempt Lizzie with the offer of the fruit. So it's a very significant part that we uh, can detect through the language of the Laura. Actually, there lies, Laura is as if uh, uh, adopting the language of the goblins. The Vasha ta Laura bol che, chata, chata goblin neri Vasha, desho, fall gulo khao, rakum fall kono din khao ni. So it's very significant that Laura is now actually trying to seduce Lizzie to eat the fruits, these exotic oriental fruits. But Lizzie will eventually uh, deny such proposals and she will emerge victorious in the end of the poem. Moving on to the next section of the poem, golden head by golden head, like two pigeons in one nest, folded in each other's wings, they lay down in their curtained bed. A very important description, which it is suggestive of the power of the sisterhood. Golden head by golden head. So uh, we now know that both the sisters have golden hairs, and they have. Uh, 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 located themselves in the bed almost like two pigeons in one nest that is suggestive of the womanly sisterhood the power of the womanly sisterhood folded in each other's wings the allusion of the pigeons have been used here they lay down in their cotton bed cotton suggestive of the Victorian ritual of cotton in the bed. Like two blossoms in one stem. They have been compared with as if two blossoms in one stem. Like the two flecks of newly fallen snow. Like two ones of ivory tipped with gold for awful kings. Moon and stars gazing at them. So they have been uh, their peaceful slumber uh, have been compared uh, with almost they have been compared with uh, two different bodies but one soul so moon and stars gazed in at them wind sang to them lullaby lumbering owls forbore to fly not a bat flap to and fro round their rest so nature is as if participating in their sleep nature participate even not a bat Flap to and fro around their nest. Even not a bat is flapping his or her wings so that they could awake. Cheek to cheek and breast to breast locked together in one nest. Early in the morning when the first cock crowed his warning. Neat like bees as sweet and busy. Laura rose with Lizzie. So the following morning Laura and Lizzie awaken to the sound of a cock crowing. And immediately they begin their usual chores. The daily domestic activities they become very busy. Laura rose with Lizzie, fetched in honey, milked the cows, aired and set to rights the house, kneaded cakes of whitest wheat. So we can detect uh, the purity of the symbol. White is the symbol of the purity. These two women are pure. And these domestic activities are very common to the to a Victorian household and that the domestic activity is essentially interlinked with a woman. At a woman borrow hoche she action domestic activity korti hobe. It by the professional world name. For a domestic activity shonge women that associate kona jay imagery should a barber rossity eco bita babar portion. Next churned butter whipped up cream fed their poultry sat and see
talked as modest maidens should. Lizzie with an open heart, Laura in an absent dream. So, uh, through uh, these words, we could uh, clearly gauge, we could clearly understand that there are certain decorums, there are certain uh, 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 conventions through which a maiden could express themselves in the Victorian time. Talked as modest maidens should. Modest maiden hotegele, Victorian culture, which particular convention mentioned kote hai. Lizzie with an open heart, Laura in an absent dream. So one content, one seek in part, one warbling for the mere bright day's delight, one longing for the night. So, uh, while their talk appears to be typical of the modest maidens, Lizzie is content while Laura is absent-minded. Laura becomes very much absent-minded and sick with the longing for the goblin fruit. One warbling for the mere bright day's delight, one longing for the night. Bright day's delight, ke bright day's delight, you know, wait, korche, Lizzie. Lizzie is enjoying her domestic work and that is the message, that is the didactic message that Christina Georgina Rossetti is trying to confer that one woman should do her domestic chores. Uh, oh, th that woman should be the ideal woman. And that woman is waiting for the bright day's delight and the other waiting for the night. Ratri Jonove for Laura. Because she is going to become the fallen woman. Goblin their fruit get surrender kocha. So either with Duto woman and a contrasting foiling character create Koratishta Korachan Christina Rossetti. The sisters in this particular text are presented as model homemakers in the style of the so-called quote-unquote angel in the house, an important Victorian cultural figure created and popularized by Coventry Patmore. She talked about the Victorian uh, cultural figure of the uh, angel in the house. So according to the 19th century uh, modes, ideal women were supposed to be meticulous household managers. So in this way, an ideal women are supposed to be Household, meticulous household manager. So, so uh, in this way, the contrast between two women is being built in this particular text. We'll move into the next section. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, we are reading uh, the poem of uh, Goblin Market. Now let us proceed. So, at length, slow evening came, they went with peachers to the reedy brook. What's the meaning of the reedy? Reedy means uh, that which is high in wave but narrow. Khorasrata chotto, chotto, tar hata volume chotto, kindo ottonto khorasrata ta nodi ke high but thin. Uh, 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 river is known as uh, brook. Lizzie most placid in her look, Laura most like a leaping flame. So you can see a direct contrast between the characters of the Lizzie and the Laura. While Lizzie uh, remains very stupefied and placid in her look, but Laura appears like a leaping flame. She mohurte at a khorosrata nodir motoi, uncontrollable leaping flame transformed which a Laura. So they drew the gargling water from its deep. They try to collect water, the gargling, the fresh gargling water from the deep of the brook, uh, Lizzie and Laura both. So Lizzie plucked purple and rich golden flags, then turning homeward said, the sunset flushes, those farthest loftiest crags. Come Laura, not another maiden lags. So in a very instructive and didactic tone, uh, Lizzie declares that, Laura, please come quickly, because not another maiden lags, because there are no other spinster who is lagging behind us. No willful squirrel wags. In fact, uh, if we talk about the animal kingdom, there is no other willful squirrel. Squirrel means cartwheel. Kono cartwheel on the pechunil. 
the beasts and birds are fast asleep so it's suggesting a very mystical and enigmatic hour when in fact all the members of the animal kingdom even withdrawn themselves from the natural landscape so while lizzy is very calm and untroubled we can see laura is very eager for another encounter with the goblins so there lies uh, the difference uh, the contrasting difference between the two sisters lizzy's gathering of the flags or irishes might also be an allusion to the mary the mother of jesus according to the floriology or the symbolic language of the flowers irishes are symbols of virgin mary and one commonly called the sword lilies the irish is associated with the plain with the pain that pierced mary when jesus was crucified so it talks about the pain of jesus mary when uh, the, uh, of the virgin mary when jesus was crucified so in lizzie's hand irishes seem to foreshadow her act of self sacrifice for her sister the act of self sacrifice that lizzie will commit later on in the text লড়ার জন্য যেটা করবে আমরা দেখব তো বারবারই গোটা টেক্সট জুড়ে আমরা দেখতে পাব দ্য কনস্ট্যান্ট কম্প্যারিজন অফ লিজি উইথ ভার্জিন মেরি উইথ জিজাস ক্রাইস্ট অ্যান্ড ভেরিয়াস আদার বিবলিক্যাল অ্যালিউশনস অ্যান্ড ক্যারেক্টার্স হু হ্যাভ স্যাক্রিফাইস দেম সেলস ফর দ্য সেক অফ দ্য হিউম্যান কাইন্ড তাদের সঙ্গে লিজির একটা তুলনা এই গোটা টেক্সট জুড়ে হচ্ছে ওয়াই লড়া অন দ্য ওয়ান হ্যান্ড ইজ বিং কম্পেয়ার উইথ ইভ অ্যান্ড other fallen women so uh, this kind of patriarchal distinction between good and the evil woman is constantly operating inside the text of goblin market moving into the uh, next portion of the text but lora loitered still among the rushes and said the bank was steep but lora said that the bank of the river of the brook was very much steep uh, and hence she uh, cannot able to uh, uh, climb that uh, particular steep bank and said the hour was early still she is making excuses she na dhoroner chesta korchi ta deri hoy eta tar shonge goblin er dekha hoy so the dew not fallen the wind not chill listening ever but not catching the customer cry come by come by so that's the real reason because the dew yet not fallen and the wind not yet chill like no bata thanda hoy ni listening ever but not catching the customer cry she even cannot able to hear now come by come by the seductive tone of the goblins jeta shune she she mohurte goblin der foot er dike attracted hobe shei je seductive tone come by come by শোনার জন্য যেন সে অপেক্ষা করছে উইথ ইটস ইটারেটেড জিঙ্গল অফ সুগার বেইটেড ওয়ার্ডস সুগার কোটেড ওয়ার্ডস যেন করে চিনি লাগানো আছে এতটাই অ্যাট্রাক্টিভ শব্দগুলো নট ফর অল হ্যার ওয়াচিং ওয়ান্স ডিসার্নিং ইভেন ওয়ান গবলিং রেসিং হুইস্কিং টাম্বলিং হবলিং ইয়েট শি ইজ নট এবল টু ইনফ্যাক্ট হিয়ার ওয়ান গবলিং হুইজ রেসিং হুইস্কিং টাম্বলিং হবলিং দৌড়চ্ছে পড়ে যাচ্ছে এখন একটা গবলিন কেউ এখনো দেখতে পাইনি লেট অ্যালোন দ্য হার্ডস দ্য রিউজ টু ট্র্যাম্প অ্যালং দ্য গ্লেন ইন গ্রুপস অর সিঙ্গল অফ ব্রিস্ক ফ্রুট মার্চেন্ট ম্যান এখনও অবধি দেখতে পাইনি একজনও দ্য হার অফ দ্য ফ্রুট মার্চেন্ট দোজ হু দ্য ট্র্যাম্পস দ্য ভ্যাগাবন্স হব ঘুরে যারা ইন গ্রুপস অর ইন সিঙ্গল দে ইউজ টু ট্র্যাম্প দ্য এন্টায়ার গ্লেন ইউজ টু ডমিনেট দ্য এন্টায়ার ন্যারো ভ্যালি এখনো তাদেরকে দেখতে একবারের জন্য পাইনি লড়াকামের and you should not loiter longer at this brook you shouldn't loiter longer tumi are ekhane beshi kono opekkha koro na come with me home amar shonge bari esho the stairs rise the moon bends her arc each glow worm wings her spark 
let us get home before the night grows dark so again the voices of conscience we can hear the voices of conscience uh, on the part of the lizzie who says that uh, in a few minutes the glow worm will appear with their spark and let us get home as quickly as possible because the night grows dark ratri hote choleche for clouds may gather though this is summer weather put out the lights and drench us through then if we lost our way what should we do though this is summer weather uh, if we uh, are not able to get some light if the light uh, uh, goes out if the li- light went out then what should we do amra ki korbo oi andhkar ratre bari phirte parbo na hoyto this darkness this uh, 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 this lack of light is suggestive of uh, something evil some omen of evil something evil is going to happen in their life kono kichu eta andhkar kalo ratri hoyto tader jibone aste choleche eta i lizi sense korche lora turn cold as stone to find her sister hard that cry alone the goblin cry come by our fruits come by must she then buy no more such dainty fruit tala ki she ek sundor phol so beautiful dainty uh, and luscious and delicious fruit ar ki she kono din kinte parbe na must she no more such suckers past your find gandeep and blind uh, we have already been informed that lizzy can hear the cry of the goblins but lora cannot so hence we can say that uh, lora is perhaps Uh, becoming a falling prey in the hands of the goblin lora shunte parche na tale ki lora bhabje she has gone deep and blind she ki ondho hoye gache ebong kane o shunte parche na her tree of light drooped from the root she said not one word in her heart so ek but peering through the dimness not discerning fragile home her picture dripping all the way so crept to bed and lay silent till lizzy slept her tree of life drooped from the root as if the jiboner gach ta keu mati theke upre tule niyeche and she said no one word in her heart so ache there is a tremendous pain a ache in which is happening inside her heart but peering through the dimness not discerning fragile home she just returns she just returns into her home and just crept to bed and lay silent till lizzy slept then lizzy fell asleep and then sat up in a passionate yearning and gnashed her teeth for balk desire and wept as if her heart would break so she trudges home with lizzy and goes to bed waiting until lizzy is asleep lora weeps and gnashes her teeth in despair so this particular description of the lines uh, as given by rossetti uh, seems uh, very controversial and at the same time it really shows uh, the tremendous uncontrolled desire on the part of the woman that uh, that uh, L- laura is uh, so much uh, seducted and attracted by these goblin men that she actually can feel the passionate yearning even after returning home waiting until the midnight when when lizzy fell asleep lora weeps and gnashes her teeth in despair she can't sleep tar je bhoyongkor ichcha she goblin men der kache phire jaba she is constantly express koche so this particular portion of the text is very important because lora is heartbroken at discovering that she cannot hear the call of the goblin men and therefore cannot buy their fruit and like jenny before her the goblins have abandoned lora after giving her a tantalizing taste of their forbidden food it actually enchants her and uh, her inner desire her craving for the food uh, greatly increases and lora conceals a despair from lizzy perhaps because lizzy has already warned her about the goblins but perhaps also because lora feels ashamed of the strength of her desire again Laura is aligned with the figure of the fallen woman in the Victorian culture who is often represented as consumed with regret and despair 
especially after she has been forsaken by her seducer so uh, lo- this constant alignment of laura with the fallen woman is happening uh, throughout the entire text now let us move into the next section of the text where we can see that how she is pining uh, day after day night after night for the fruit day after day night after night laura kept watch in vain in sullen silence of exceeding pain so for several days and nights laura silently keeps watch in hope that the goblins will reappear but they never reappear and hence she is feeling great sorrow and anxiety exceeding pain bhayankar jontona she never caught again the goblin cry come by come by she is not able to hear this recurrent cry come by come by this uh, cry which has been associated with the commercialization the objectification of the female body she cannot able to hear this cry she never spied the goblin men hawking their fruits along the glen but when the noon waxed bright her hair grew thin and gray this very uh, uh, rendering of her hair as thin and gray this very uh, first seed of aging which has been implanted inside her this will lo- lead her to utter damnation and doom ei je lorar aste aste boyesh hota arambho korche ebong tar chuler moddhe koy ekta grey hair paoa jacche paka chul paoa jacche eta contemporary victorian society ta eta birat boro seal eta birat boro shock যে এরকম একটা ভয়ঙ্কর জিনিস একটা মহিলার সঙ্গে হচ্ছে এবং গবলিন মেন রেসপন্সিবল ফর ইট সো সি ডুইন্ডল্ড অ্যাজ দে আর ফেয়ার ফুল মুন ডট টার্ন টু সুইপ ডিকে সো দিস কম্প্যারিজন অফ দ্য ফুল মুন উইথ দ্য ডিকে এ সুইফট ডিকে অফ দ্য মুন অ্যান্ড বার্নিং অফ দ্য ক্যান্ডেল বার্ন হার ফায়ার অ্যাভ এ বার্নিং অফ দ্য ফায়ার বার্নিং অফ দ্য ক্যান্ডেল দ্য the decay of the candle these are very much uh, evocative language suggesting that the youth of the woman is dwindling away so one day remembering her carnel stone she set it by a wall that faced the south she has collected the carnel stone from the goblin men goblin men er kach theke carnel seed ekta pechilo jokhon age phol kechilo shetar kotha bhebe she je hotar hotak kore tar youth chole jacche she ফল গুলো খেলে যদি তার ইউথ ফিরে আসে সে সেটিড বাই এ ওয়ার্ল্ড দ্যাট ফেস দ্য সাউথ সে সেটাকে পুটলো সাউথে ডিউ রিড উইথ টিয়ার্স তার নিজের চোখে জল দিয়ে সেটার মধ্যে শিশিদের মতো করে ফেললো হোপ ফর এ রুট ভাবলো একদিন এর মধ্যে চারা গাছ জন্মাবে এর মূলটা পৌঁছবে মাটি অব্দি ওয়াচ ফর এ ওয়াক্সিং শ্যুট বাট ডেয়ার কেম নান হল না ইট নেভার স দ্য সান কোনো দিন সেই বীজটা সূর্য রশ্মি দেখলো না ইট নেভার ফেল্ড দ্য ট্রিকলিং ময়েস্টার রান হোয়াইল দ্য সাং কাইজ অ্যান্ড ফেরেড মাউথ শি ড্রেম দ্য মেলনস অ্যাজ আ ট্রাভেলার সিজ ফলস ওয়েভস ইন ডেজার্ট ড্রাউথ অ্যাজ লরা বিকামস উইকার অ্যান্ড ওল্ডার লুকিং শি ড্রিমস অফ দ্য ফ্রুট ইন দ্য ওয়ে দ্য ট্রাভেলার ইন দ্য ডেজার্ট ড্রিমস অফ অ্যান ওয়েসিস অ্যান্ড বিকামস থ্রাস্টিয়ার জাস্ট লাইক এ ট্রাভেলার ইন দ্য ডেজার্ট who after seeing a oasis at a muruddan dekhar pore tar je rokom moner moddhe she bhayongkor ve thrashti hoye uthe lorao she rokom bhabe thrashti hoye uthlo she is dreaming of the melons and the fruits of the travelers and falls waves in desert je rokom bhabe bhul dekhe morishika dekhe ekta birat boro morubhumir moddhe she rokom bhabe lorao jeno morishika dekhte aram with shade of leaf crown trees and burns the thrust here in the sand full breeze she no more swept the house tended the fowls or cows she is now neglecting the household tasks the household chores which is a great crime in the victorian society grihoster kaaje je tumi faki dao eta birat boro crime victorian society so fetch thani needed cakes of wheat brought water from the brook but sat down listless in the chimney nook and would not eat she kono kaj korte parche na kneading of the cake fetching the honey bringing the water from the brook stream theke jol ana kono kaj korte parche na 
So after this, Laura neglects the household chores that she previously shared with her sister. No longer cleaning, tending the livestock, cooking and even drawing water from the brook. So instead, she is only uh, sitting listless in the chimney nook, chimney corner of the bush and does not eat khada portion. So without the goblin fruit, Laura is overcome with grief. Her once golden hair is transformed, becoming thin and grey, like an old woman's, just as Janie's did. Remember Janie? The archetypal example of the Victorian fallen woman? Laura's hair is an extension of herself and a reflection of her spiritual, emotional and physical health or unwellness in this instance. Her hair trade represents what she our physical and moral health and furthermore Laura's inability to grow more food suggests that she has become in some sense barren and unable to produce life unable to support life which according to the Victorian eyes is a crime to be jibon dori kor shonatumi you are a woman you are a reproductive machine to be jibon dori kor te bach shonatumi barren hoi gacho and to be poti ta nari kumari ato gacho bhoyongkar patriarchal idea formidable patriarchal ideas a text in Muddha Mara Dekhte Pai but at the same time a text is a didactic text uh, addressed to the women of the 1862 uh, showing uh, what the boundary of the woman is Ajgar Priti Vita Dhani Ye Dwajar Kuri Vita Dhani Ye Dukho Bolte Vari Ye Aamadar Shomaj Aamadar Patriarchal Society constantly at the politics of the year. Amon Nabe society the charity operate for a chair. Amadar care which you specific role women and male their assigned question. It follows a gender role will appear at her masculinity and femininity. What the ideal definition of a woman is at a society for that. The take a Victorian household a protect a domestic beauty court the hobby. ताके ए काज गुलो ताके सक्सेसफुली कोर्ट तबे तो अबे इस एक जो नाइडियल कोट अनकोट ओमे ने ट्रांसफॉर्म्ड हो बे सो इफ द गॉब्लिंस एक्सोटिक फ्रूट रिप्रेजेंट्स अ डिजायर फॉर फोर बिलियन थिंग्स दैट वर डीम्ड अनएक्सेप्टेबल फॉर उइवन एट द टाइम द फ्रूट आल्सो मेक्स इट इम्पॉसिबल फॉर in this uh, context as a domestic woman. She is being constantly attracted to the fruit. So I will go to the next section of the poem uh, in the next class. So till now, bye. This is my fourth lecture. I have completed my fourth lecture. I will commence my fifth lecture uh, from the next class. So thank you. See you in the uh, next class.